far and far away. He's defied the order of kings and queens. He's served and helped his captain master. This is a traveler like none other. Can I have your oohs, your ahs, and all your loud love for Kevin McNally! Welcome to the Sunday show. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Is it too deep? Yeah. Oh, maybe I'm just too big. <laughs> if you feel like staying here all day, it's fine, but stretch out. <laughs> Did you have a good time so far at the show? Yeah, it's been great. This is my third show I've done in the Netherlands. The first one was in Utrecht. It was huge. Uh, the second one was in... Hussen, am I right? Hussen? Which was one of the smallest I've ever been to. I think there were me and about three other people there. What is it? Hausen. Hausen. This is a very hard thing. I, oh, I know I can't do it. It's <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, and I've had a lovely time here. Um, some lovely cosplayers I've met. Um, Really, really, uh, people have put a lot of effort into this, and so I think a round of applause for everybody here. Thank you very much. Um, well, they're happy to see you. You are somewhat of a pirate expert now, by trade. Oh, absolutely, yes. You know, is there, is there anything... Well, I'm sure as a young boy, you've read adventure novels, you saw some pirate movies... Well, yes, because when I was growing up, um, th there were, uh, on the television, you saw a lot of 50s movies, and people like Tyrone Power and Errol Flynn, they'd made all of those 40s and 50s pirate films, so I was a real fanatic about pirates. And they've also been something of, um, uh, I, I, it's been in my life a lot. The very first job I did professionally in the theatre, and I don't know if you know this book, but I played Jim Hawkins in Treasure Island when I was about 16. So the very first thing I did was all about uh, pirates. I didn't know I was going to get old and become one, you know. <laughs> but the very funny thing about getting the pirates job was... Um, about uh, two years before I got the gig, um, my daughter had an operation which meant she, uh, on her head, which meant she couldn't fly. And I wanted to take her away somewhere after the operation, so I took her to Disneyland Paris had just opened, and I took her there. And about two years later, I found myself on the set of Pirates of the Caribbean, and I phoned her up and said, um, she said, how's the film going? I said, it's strange because it all seems quite familiar. <laughs> like I've seen it before. And she went, yeah, we went on Pirates of the Caribbean ride five times. <laughs> and I went, oh, that was what it was. Um, and it, interestingly, if I remembered that the character, the, the, the animatronic that my character's based on with a, a man, a drunken man with pigs, I remembered hating his costume. So I definitely knew I didn't want to dress like the, the, the guy in the thing. And another interesting thing happened that when we went to do a read-through at Johnny's uh, club in Hollywood, um, they, what they often do is they only have the lead actors, they don't have all the small parts yet. And there was a small part at the beginning of the film of a man in the Navy who was really scared of pirates. So they said, would you read that part as well? So I said, yeah. So I said, quiet, Missy. Cursed pirates sail these waters. And they went... Actually, that's brilliant. If that's Gibbs, he's so scared of pirates, the only way he can overcome his, his phobia is to become a pirate. So then we got, then, because I didn't want the costume, we realized he'd been cashiered out of the Navy, and they used to do that by tearing your buttons off and tearing your sleeves off. So it was basically a ripped up naval costume that he was wearing. So it all tied in really, really nicely. Wow. That was a very long answer for a short question, wasn't it? I, I think it was very informative. I mean, <laughs> look at their happy faces. Oh, bless <laughs> <laughs> oh. Even in the back. It's Can you hear me at the back? Yeah. 
Yeah, are the people in the back also like Kevin or not? Or? And I can tell you I don't need a microphone! <laughs> a thespian. Theatre training. Yes, of course. I'm going to jump into the audience. Well, I don't have to because this person here in front has had a question for several years. And she will be given the opportunity to ask you right now. So here we go, and then afterwards, some acrobatics. Hi, um, first of all, I'm a huge fan of Pirates of the Caribbean, etc. Why are you yeah. wearing a Hogwarts uniform? <laughs> <laughs> because I couldn't get a Pirates outfit together, I'm sorry. Um, my you question... know they've never put me in those films, don't you? You're doing this on purpose. <laughs> yes, obviously. <laughs> no, my question was, I don't know if you know, but there's this theory that you're always four handshakes away from anyone in the world. Yes, I've heard that. And I've been trying to get to Orlando Bloom, and I'm on three handshakes now, so you would make it two. Yes! yes! <laughs> well, that's, that's a small handshake, but it's a giant handshake for mankind. So much is clear. Let's see, is there all handen with vragen? The one, two, and then I'll follow and... Ah, I'm falling down. Excellent. Oh, you had a question. Uh, as Mr. Gibbs, your, basically your role wasn't just uh, go, don't question it, just go with it. Did that come natural to you? Was it like, just... I've got another very long answer. Ooh. Another, another feisty tale. Well, th this is really interesting about, the, about Mr. Gibbs' voice. One of my favorite comedians in England was a man called Tony Hancock. He was in the 50s, the 60s. He actually committed suicide in 1968, and recently I have had the great pleasure of recreating his radio shows that were lost or had been wiped and were missing from the 1950s. And one of the things he had is he used to do an impression of Robert Newton playing Long John Silver in Treasure Island. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if I did an impression of my favorite comedian doing an impression of Robert Newton of Long John Silver from the 1950s? But I thought to make it slightly different, I researched where pirates came from, and they mainly came from the ports of Dublin and Bristol, which face each other in the, in the British Isles. Now my dad, I was an only child, I'm the classic example of an only child, spoilt. Um, my dad had a strong Dublin accent and my mother had a strong Bristol accent. So I sort of put those two together and I came up with this along with Tony Hancock doing, um, Robert Newton doing, um, <laughs> doing Long John Silver. The funny thing is, when we did this read through I mentioned, I started off, quiet Missy, curse pirates sail these waters. And uh, Jeffrey Rush, when he went white next to me, he said, he said, that's the voice I was going to do. <laughs> so I said, well, we just must ask the writers never to have us talk next to each other. Well, we didn't because we weren't in the same crew. But in the second movie, we had a scene where he said to me, ah, the green flash. Have you ever seen the green flash, Mr. Gibbs? And I went, yes, I think I've seen my fair share. And we went, oh, bloody hell, this is terrible. So we got an actor to say a line in between those, and hopefully the audience would forget that we sounded exactly the same. And then years later, he came to me and he said, when people ask me how I got my accent, what shall I tell them? And I said, well, I always tell them I mixed up my parents, that my dad was Irish and my mum was from Bristol. You tell them your dad was from Bristol and your mum was from Ireland. It's a completely different accent. And he does that to this day. <laughs> <laughs> Another question. Hi, I was wondering if it's okay to ask you about your experiences on Downton Abbey, because I believe you also uh, were there with your partner. I, I, I was. Um, I, um, I played the, a really horrible person, and um, I had a terrible moustache, but I was able, the, the thing that interested me most, I was able to use the accent I grew up with, which is a Midland accent from England. I'm very keen on accents. But uh, I, it, was, it was interesting uh, to do. Um, I, I, the only thing I don't like to do, and I, I might offend people by this, 
um, because I know there are a lot of fans here of Midsummer Murders. I hate procedurals. You know, I mean, I, I wouldn't dare do it. I must tell you a funny story about Midsummer Murders. When John Nettles left, he was the leading policeman. My agent phoned me up and said, because I'd done two episodes of it, and he said, the producers of Midsummer Murders have got in touch with me. They've got a short list of seven actors to replace John Nettles, and your name is on the list. I said, would you do me a favor? Would you ask them very kindly to take my name off the list? Because I can't stand procedurals. It's because it would be months each year going around saying, hello there, miss, where were you on the 7th of April this year? Did you know a man called John Colcott? Is that blood on your shirt? I couldn't be asked with it. I couldn't be asked. <laughs> so that, yeah, that I went somewhere hard with that. But there, next question. <laughs> hands, hands, hands here. Uh, yes. Uh, what was one of your? Um, wow. Well, uh, what was a uh, which pirate movie uh, was your favorite to work on? And. Um, in which one uh, had, you mo had you had the most fun to act in? Well, uh, my answer to that is always the second one for two reasons. One is that when we started the first one, we had no idea what it was going to be like, or even if it would ever get released, and Disney weren't behind it. The second one, we knew we were in a hit, and it also has the most of Mr. Gibbs in it, <laughs> which I think really helps the movie you know because you sit there bored going oh when is mr gibbs gonna come back on again for heaven's sake yeah johnny depp johnny depp orlando bloom ah mr gibbs hi um from all the pirates movies i know that a lot of the uh the the script has been changed kind of like at the spot so what would be your favorite quote that you maybe made yourself of, or that was written for you well i didn't personally do that but there is a moment in the first film in the scene where i'm telling orlando bloom about the sea turtles and how how jack sparrow escaped from the island and at the end of it i say you know he lashed two turtles together and and off he went and he says to me where did he get the rope and i go oh where would have you got the rope from? And he came up, and jo Johnny came up, and the line was, I wove together human hair, and then he added, from my back. And if you watch the scene, I just turn to the camera and go, <laughs> but it looks like I'm saying it to Orlando. There are many times in the film that things stayed in that I don't understand. One of them was when we got to Davy Jones' locker, you know, the beach, and the, 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 the boat comes over on, on the stones, which are, which are, are crabs. Sorry? No, she's talking to uh, uh, cosplayers there. Well, They're uh, going to walk around. I think she should stop. Um, <laughs> so he comes over, and I go, slap me thrice and hand me to me, Mama, it's Jack, and I run off screen. This was the day I decided that I was going to have my teeth painted because they'd given me nasty pirate teeth. And it's still in the film. As I run off, my teeth shoot out of my mouth and leave the frame just before I do. Have a look. It's really funny. <laughs> Slap me thrice and hand me to me, mum. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a... Uh... It's kind of a secret thing to look out for then. Here another question. Hello, Mr. Gibbs. Uh, thanks for having us, uh, you here. <laughs> Hello. Um, two questions. One, what casting agents would you recommend? Casting agents? Yes. In the UK. In the UK. Well, funnily enough, a friend of mine just sent me a list of every casting director in England because he's trying to revitalize his career a little bit um, the number one casting agent in the UK is Nina Gold bless her who just got me up for two jobs that I didn't get um, so um, yeah that's the one I would recommend I've got uh, one more question oh yeah um, I can hear you love to tell and we love to listen what is your favorite 
story to tell to the audience? Uh, well, I've just told three of them. <laughs> no, but you have to choose How many one. more do you want? Do you want me to recommend you Five. to Nina Gold or not? <laughs> Always. Always. Um, it's best if they come naturally from the questions, I feel. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't really stop them up. I mean, what's wonderful about doing these things is people ask me questions and it will remind me of something that I did. Well, you know, we, we started filming the first pirate, pirate film 21 years ago, so it's a lot of stuff to remember. Good, I'm, I moved here. There you are, yes. yes yay. That yeah. way the sound guy can also I see, see you got, you're standing next to that potted plant. Yes. Oh, here, yes. yes. But it's a magical potted plant. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and right beside that, this... As a pirate wench. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, so I was wondering... Why haven't you come up and got my autograph? Uh, because I was busy spending way too much money on... <laughs> okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> I'll accept that excuse. <laughs> So I was wondering... Is there one of me down there? I tell you, you kids are in trouble. You really are. <laughs> Sorry, your question, Don. Yes. Uh, what's the most bizarre thing that has ever happened on uh, a film set? Where, with, uh, with you? Well, um, there are many bizarre things that happened, but I'll tell you the funniest thing that happened. Very early on in the first film, me, Orlando Bloom, and Johnny Depp were doing a scene on a tiny boat. Um, I don't know, can't remember what part of the plot it was, but they, they were going to dump, they're called dumpers, they, they're like eight, ga eight gallon things of water on us, and there was a, there was a, a, a wind machine, and, so, and, it was, and it, we, were, we were rehearsing about two in the morning, we were going to shoot it about four in the morning, and uh, they, said, they said to us, okay, we finished rehearsals, go and get your wetsuits on, under your costume so that you don't get wet you don't get pneumonia and then come back and we'll shoot the scene and we were walking off and johnny depp said he said here kevin he said um, don't put the wetsuit on i said why he said he puts about six pounds on you you look fat on screen and i went well i had a bit of weight on me i thought i don't want to look more fat than i am so I, I, I went in and the wardrobe woman said, Here's your, I said, I don't need a wetsuit. Thank you very much, I'm a pirate. Keep your wetsuit. So I, I go back about an hour later and I'm just about to step on the ship and Johnny says, uh, Kevin, did you put the wetsuit on? I went, no. He pulled open his shirt, there was a wetsuit. He said, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Never forgive him for that. Wow, one pirate prank after the other. Yes. Well, uh, our time is at an end on this stage right for now. Well, we could do right. this for another two hours, probably. Well, my next answer would probably be two hours. Yeah. <laughs> but if they have any more, great. if they have any more questions, I'm sure they'll come up. I'm sure they'll come yes. up. I'm totally well, just emotional. come and see me. <laughs> it's such a long note. And, uh, <laughs> I'm sure they'll come over to your table. That would be lovely. They'll meet you. They'll talk to you once more. Please do. Thank you very much. It's been a joy. Thank you. <laughs> Kevin Magnetic! Wow, such great stories once more here on the stage.